Friday night, we had an event at the Reed House, and uh, I took my mother, and we went down there because, well, I thought maybe I could help out, you know, since it was kind of, you know, a derby party, and we were pouring, so, <laughs> you know, whatever, but much to my surprise, uh, the general manager was like, hey, you want to go check out our haunted room? And I'm like, eh, 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 eh. so not only did we go check it out, but we also got a grand tour and uh, I filmed it. So here we go. Reed House, room 311. Check it out. Let's start out with a little history of the hotel, if that's okay. Per 1847, Thomas Crutchfield built the Crutchfield House on this property. Um, it was a hotel to start with. And um, it was uh, quickly became a center of hospitality here in the South. It was it was the political, economic, and social center of Chattanooga at the time. And Cr Thomas Crutchfield actually became the mayor at, at one point as well. Let's see. Uh, during the Civil War, 1860s, the Crutchfield House was commandeered by the Union troops. It was taken over by the Union troops via Civil War Hospital. So, so, see, September 20th of 1863, we accommodated 500 wounded soldiers all in that one day. Oh, wow. That was, uh, and that was the last day of the Battle of Chickamauga, one of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War and a nearby one here, just about a half hour away, I'd say. 1867, just going forward in time, two years after the war ended, 1867, the Crutchfield House burned to the ground. It was a uh, fire in the boiler room, or, sorry, the, um, <laughs> Um, oil room that caused it. Really? The fire down there. Yeah. Oh, I never... It was a three story wooden structure that just burned down. And then the property was sold to John Reed, though. And um, so, so the, the, the burning down was sad of the Crutchfield House, but John Reed bought the property. The building was rebuilt and it became the Reed House in 1872. So um, we've been open since then. This is, our, this is actually our 150th year. Um, yeah. this year. So we're the longest continuously operating hotel in the southeast. So, um, yes. yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> in um, 1926, this building was built, this 10-story uh, historic tower, and uh, we call it the historic tower since it's now about 100 years old. But 1926, it was built. 1976, uh, we were put on the National Register of Historic Places. So we're on the map with the U.S. government. As far as they're concerned, this building can't be demolished and the facade has to remain. So uh, without further ado, come on with me and I'll show you 311. Thank you. Oh, um, in 2018, we renovated the $27 million renovation. Yes. Um, that, uh, at that time, most of the attention went to this side of the hotel, the historic tower side. And, and also at that time, we kept 311 as it would have been in the Roaring Twenties. That was in order to accommodate our permanent guests without reference to anyone else's comfort. So without further ado, welcome to the early 20th century. Oh my goodness. Oh. This is wonderful. Ooh. Yeah, so let's see here. Um, wow. This is this double bladed fan, a lot of people notice that. Mm -hmm. It puts out a lot of air. Yeah. That would have been important in the roaring 20s because we got central air conditioning in 1953. So, yeah. Um, and then all this furniture is of the time period. That's um, beautiful. Yes, absolutely. It's absolutely and then, um, including this hall tree, this hall tree has the distinction, however, of um, having been here, we think original to the room. Blade fan. Yeah, isn't it? It is. I, I've literally. <laughs> I've never seen one. No. Well, we weren't around in the 20s. And well, I mean, even. This one, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say this one's on the phone line. Uh huh. Uh, th this one's not. I was showing your. See, are you. She's mom? my daughter. Yeah. So I showed your mom this one. This one uh, is not on the phone line. Oh, she my gosh. It has, a, it has a dial tone because we have to have a working phone in every suite. Right. So, uh, oh, <laughs> hold on. I gotta do it. I've always wanted one of these phones. This is 
so cool. I shouldn't be touching stuff because now they're probably going to have to sanitize it. No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> It's amazing. You know, I, like, I like to let the kids hear dial tones too, you know, like for the first time and stuff. It was kind of fun oh, look at as this. well. What kind of radio is that? It's a vacuum tube. I believe it's an old vacuum tube radio. That's awesome. And then you got an ashtray, as we've been throughout the hotel. Yeah. Of course. And come on in here, I'll show you a few other things. We'll also discuss excuse me, the legend of Annalise and Natalie as well. But yeah, the bars have a history. There was a time when some of our guests um, climbed out of the lower story windows, um, climbed down the building, hopped on the Union Station train across the street, um, bypassed the front desk, and not paid their bill. Gotcha. Yeah. So we put bars on our bottom three floors in order to prevent that from happening. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, that? Yeah. That's very crazy. I, I, I think, think it's gorgeous. So. Uh, but fire code came in and told us you can't trap people in a hotel, it's a fire hazard. <laughs> so we took all the bars down, except for 311. Currently 311 got to retain its bars. Now that was important because in 1931, we had an infamous criminal who needed them. <gasps> yes, so he had been caught on tax evasion. The only thing that could make Al Capone? Stick. Yes, huh? yeah. So um, apparently he stayed in this room. So. Um, he, uh, let's see, in the common tax evasion, he was tried, convicted, hmm. incarcerated, brought north by the police from Atlanta toward Chicago, and apparently stopped in Chattanooga. It is ironic, though, that they put a murderer like Al Capone in the same room that a murder had happened. So that was 1931. Uh, four years earlier, 1927, is when Annalisa Nebeli's story begins in 311. Okay. So uh, Annalisa, and some people call her Annalise, but it's actually Annalisa. Uh, Annalisa Nebeli was a San Franciscan. She was a pretty young lady, um, probably in her early 20s, as the legend goes, um, early 20s, married. Her husband was on a long business trip. Um, he left her here with a lot of money, probably, for extended stay. And um, uh, she probably got a little bored while here because left alone with time, thoughts, her thoughts, and the big room. She probably went downstairs to the bar and billiards where there were um, uh, handsome young gentlemen playing billiards down yeah. there. And sparks flew, chemistry happened. Miss Netherly apparently cheated on Mr. Nelly several times Sorry. while here at the Reed House. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Mr. Nelly, the shrewd businessman that he was, had contacts in Chattanooga. So he... Um, Checking on his wife. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so he found out, came back to Chattanooga, um, found the Reed House, located her room, barged in, and... Uh, she was bathing at the time. He took a straight razor off the counter and slit her throat. <clears throat> Cut her head almost completely off, actually. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I kind of told it. Housekeeping found her a few days later. Days? Yeah. Wow. It was a nasty surprise. No doubt. No. Yeah. That's why we're not surprised, however, if Annalise and Neville continues to haunt 311. Yeah. It's sweet. So, uh, that's wow. her story. Um, Everything is so beautiful. Yeah, thank you. So, um, and then, I was going to say, um, this may be the original tub, 1916. This tub we checked is 1916, so it would have been 11 years old at the time. Mm -hmm and uh, clawfoot, cast iron. It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah that also. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, yeah, so, and then a lot, a lot, it's usually the people who stay here overnight that especially seem to agitate Annalisa. So let me just tell you that our tour guide, John, was really amazing. I highly recommend him uh, for pretty much everything at the Reed House. But 
he was also very open to hearing about my own experiences and what I was uh, picking up in the room. And I was really appreciative of that. So if you're in the area and, or if you are visiting Chattanooga and you want to stop and get a really awesome experience, contact the Reed House and, about taking this tour. Um, and I, I really, it's, it's the room itself is absolutely amazing and cool just to actually uh, see it in its original state. So that's, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Uh, but you know, all the other paranormal stuff is pretty cool too. So check it out. Peace and love. See you next time. Bye.